see rings levitate and then fly. Witness hands crush, wires dance, and projectiles shoot faster than the speed of sound. All using the invisible forces of electromagnetism. Learn how it's done in the latest adventures of Plasma Boy. Sam Barrows is a 22-year-old electrical and mechanical engineering student at Michigan Tech University. My teachers usually don't know about the experiments I run. After class in the privacy of a basement lab, Sam becomes a mad scientist known only as Plasma Boy. I'm always pushing the envelope. How much more power will it handle? Can I create a bigger magnetic field? It usually ends up that my devices destroy themselves. Well, not all of them do. This one survived his rail gun. In technical terms, a rail gun is a linear electromagnetic accelerator. But in reality, all that's telling you is we're using electricity to push something forward. Rail guns can be used for anything from magnetic levitation trains to elevators to space launchers and weapons, of course. Three, two, one. Plasma Boy has been honing his skills ever since he first stuck a hairpin into a wall socket. It gets pretty hot, too. I have burned myself countless times. Uh, last week, I still have band-aids on my hands from it. I grabbed a soldering iron by the wrong end because I was trying to do two things at once. I've had all sorts of silly scrapes, cuts, burns, minor electrocutions. Nothing very serious, though. These experiences led him in search of the basics. In this ruler, the first sphere is a magnet, and every sphere under a tape is also a magnet. When I let this ball bearing go, it will accelerate by magnetic attraction towards the first magnet, and on impacting it, it will send a metal sphere towards the next magnet. As the spheres progressively accelerate towards the magnets, they gain speed. So the end result is that the last sphere leaves with a lot more velocity than the first one came in. Thus we can see how a magnetic field can be used to accelerate objects by attraction. But magnets can also repel. This device is a Thomson coil. When plugged in, it will produce an alternating magnetic field on this rod. That alternating magnetic field induces an eddy current on the aluminum ring, and this eddy current produces a magnetic field of its own. So as the magnetic field of the ring repels the magnetic field in the rod, the ring is fired upwards. Plasma Boy can also vary the current to make the ring levitate. Dip the ring in liquid nitrogen, he can create a stronger magnetic force and shoot the ring higher. I almost caught it, but then I remember it was really cold. <laughs> if you drop a piece of aluminum through the pipe, nothing special really happens. However, as a magnet falls through the pipe, it will induce a current on the pipe walls. That current produces a magnetic field of its own. And as the field of the pipe repels the field of the magnet, the magnet is slowed down. This is exactly the reverse of what happens in a Thompson coil. And you might be familiar with this application in some theme park rides where an elevator free falls and then slows down gently. What is slowing down the elevator is a magnetic braking system. Armed with the basics, Plasma Boy set out to test those limits. Now we're going to load a two inch long piece of iron into the coil gun. Turn on the voltmeter, which allows me to monitor the voltage in the capacitor bank. When I flip the switch, the coil will produce a magnetic field several hundred thousand times stronger than the Earth. And that projectile was fired at over 400 kilometers an hour. This coil gun is a smaller version of his rail gun, but while a coil gun uses magnetic attraction to propel an object... And we hit the target. The rail gun uses magnetic repulsion. That was nice. Hey, that was pretty cool. To illustrate how the rail gun works, we're going to look at what happens to a wire when it carries electricity through a magnetic field. In between the poles of this magnet, there is a very strong magnetic field. We're going to connect this wire to a car battery, and as the current flows through the wire, it's pushed up by the magnetic force. The same principle is used in the rail gun, but by using a capacitor bank, we can create a much stronger magnetic field. Now let's set it up, and I'll show you how it works. Plasma Boy spent a whole summer building the railgun at a cost of over $10,000, thanks to sponsors he met online. When electricity flows through the aluminum foil, it will become a plasma, and that plasma will accelerate the non-conductive projectile forward. 
what you're looking at is plasma. It happens every time electricity flies through the air. The same phenomenon is happening inside the railgun. And it can be used to propel non-conductive projectiles. But the projectile needs some help to reach the powerful magnetic field. And that requires another form of propellant. We're charging up the gas tanks on the railgun with 400 psi of nitrogen gas. This gas flows through the solenoid valve and is used to accelerate the projectile into the rails. Without this, if the projectile was simply to be placed on the rails and power turned on, it would weld itself in place. When activated, the railgun will be producing enough power to supply a city of 300,000, hence the heavy bulletproof casing. I'm probably more excited than you are about this. This is the first time the gun has ever been charged this high. When I push this button, over 300 million watts of power will flow through the rails, accelerating the projectile to, higher, to speeds higher than Mach 1. Three, two, one. So what motivates our science superhero to take such risk? My belief is that there is no such thing as a bad technology. Anything is a weapon if you see right. The same nuclear power that powers electricity to our homes can be used to make a nuclear bomb. The same radiation that can be used for x-rays can be used by terrorists to create dirty bombs. The same railgun that can accelerate a train and make cheaper, faster transportation for the people can also be used to accelerate projectiles in the battlefield. Luckily, Plasma Boy plans on using that knowledge for good. I love to work for an automotive company building cleaner cars, or maybe I could work for NASA or some other research entity building, uh, I don't know, perhaps even railguns to test space shielding against high-velocity micrometeorite impacts. As long as I'm doing research, I think I'll be happy. So stay tuned for the next adventures of Plasma Boy.